if I had talked to him and he said, yeah, I think it's a really strong business, but I was talking to my friend Joe and Joe told me I should talk to you because I see that it's growing really fast. by opportunity, not problems. So as a recovering attorney, I can tell you that people do not sue generally people that they like. If you have that feeling at all, don't do a deal with somebody. Now this is my philosophy. I don't think that's smart because there's so many people that you will like that you can do business with. There's 420,000 businesses a month just from the baby boomers, right? So there's plenty of businesses out there I think you must like the people. You must see this as something that you would have fun doing and enjoy because if you don't, the problems that will come up that you don't know about, they'll just grind you down. So make sure it's something that you actually like. Avoid low margin businesses like grocery stores or diverting businesses. I don't even like retail for that reason because the, the margins are usually too low. I don't like inventory businesses for that same reason. So um, if you make a mistake, if you're wrong in your numbers and the margin is really low, you can get to a loss from a profit pretty quick. Avoid tech and heavily regulated for the same reason. Um, now, I don't consider a subscription tech business I'm not really worried about if it's looking good, but if I'm developing tech, I'm concerned about it. I will say that symbiotic tech companies, so like if you're a meerkat, you know, and you're developing an app that's gonna run off of Twitter or Facebook or something like that, or you have an app that's scraping people, a SaaS that's scraping uh, data from Google to do SEO reporting or something like that, I would run away super fast from that. I also, even though you can make a lot of money on Amazon, I don't like Amazon businesses because I had the experience of Amazon coming into the niche with Amazon Basics of the company that we had, and then it just evaporated that, that market just went away. Amazon's like, yeah, we do that now. And they do do that, right? And ultimately, I imagine that's their goal is to only do that, right? So I don't like depending on other people. I don't like building my house on rented land. Um, avoid downtrending industries. I mentioned oil and gas and solar and retirement plans. Those are on the down. You want tailwind businesses that are going to buoy you up. And then avoid expensive capital expenditure or operation expense businesses like manufacturing, wholesale, retail, assisted living, that kind of stuff. These are just some kind of problem companies that in my experience, I try to avoid. So this is the stuff that to me, if somebody's looking for help with sales or marketing or finance or ops, um, that's all opportunity for you. If you can help with that, that's in and out opportunity for you. Um, helping them restructure the business to be either profitable or saleable. For me, I do that 18K half day and then I get on a whiteboard and completely restructure people's businesses and they're like, I've got six businesses I can sell and I totally see the path now, right? That's a big deal. So that's very valuable to them. Um, if they're burned out, they might need help bringing in a manager or professional management or a team so that they don't destroy the business because they're burned out. So that's an actual opportunity. And that's, that's something, or, or their, their business, like this is with, was with Ryan and Perry and Rich, and they'll tell you this too, they had outgrown, the business's size had outgrown their managerial competence. So it was time to bring in a professional CFO and a professional CEO and a professional HR person and some other people, right? It was time to do that because they were doing all that and they didn't know how. They didn't know how at scale. Growth stalls, that's really common, right? Now, marketing and sales uh, typically relate to growth stalls. So why has the company stopped growing? Why are sales flat for the last four years? And then just access to your network or your ability to do R&D. A lot of deals I do are because I have a really great network and so people want access to it and they want to have me involved so they can do that. So these are all great opportunities for you to look at what are your skills and how, how might you come into a company to add that value. Well, we do want to find motivated sellers, right? So I, like, if, if I come to you and I say, hey Terry, I'm interested in, um, you know, I'm interested in talking to you about an investment, and then we go through it and I use my high pitch, you know, you ever think about selling? You know? She had like a little slack button. And then you say, you say, then you think about it and you're like, Nah, man, I, 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 mean, I talked to a guy the other day that's got a subscription wine box business and, um, and I instantly disliked him, you know, and he had asked for an introduction to me 
And I'm talking to him and he had asked for an introduction uh, for that reason, because he wanted either investment or yeah. thinking about exit. And he told his friend that. And then I get on the phone with him and he's like, yeah, man, my business is awesome. I've never had a business this good. It's just amazing. I mean, I'm not going to sell it. I mean, maybe if somebody wants to come and pay me way too much money, then maybe I'll think about selling it. But, you know. That's kind of what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like. And I, I, had him on, name your price. I had him on speakerphone and I'm looking at my wife and she's going, you know, it's just like, so, so that's not. That's not that's your guy, not, that's not what we're right? Talking. That's not your guy. But if you talk, if I had talked to him and he said, "Yeah, I think it's a really strong business," but um, but I, I was talking to my friend Joe, and Joe told me I should talk to you because um, I see that it's growing really fast, and we're in this cycle of having to buy more inventory, and then you know, then we need we sell it, and then we have to buy even more inventory, and so I'm never really catching up on my cash flow, Hi guys. right? So